Hey yo, Antonio. As a kid, I used to cross my eyes for fun. But then folks would always say, don't cross your eyes or they'll stay that way. It's an incredible incentive for kids to not seem silly. And besides, we hear it all the time. Don't cross your eyes or they'll stay that way. But what I want to know is to what extent is this true? So in this video, we'll be covering whether the crossing of eyes make them stay that way, why some eyes like to wander off mysteriously, and I'll also share some important information about lazy eyes and how they can be prevented. Binocular vision is a complex subject, so before we begin, let's cover some basics. The muscles around our eyes, also known as the extraocular muscles, are designed to move them in different directions, up, down, left, right, and even rotationally. When we cross our eyes, we're pulling the inner muscles inwards, making the eyes point towards the nose, giving off this appearance. This can be done voluntarily by focusing on a nearby object and slowly moving it closer until the eyes point towards each other, but at any given point, if we relax our eyes, they return to normal again. Each set of eyes, including yours and mine, have what is known as euphoria, which is our eye's preferred state of alignment. A default setting, if you will. And it stems from multiple factors such as your anatomy, potential weaknesses in a muscle, or even a compromised nerve signal from the brain. When fully relaxed, eyes generally like to default to their euphoria, which can present in a number of different ways. This deviation is normally nullified thanks to the stabilization features of our extraocular muscles, but if the deviation is too large or the muscles become overworked, then it can lead to fatigue or double vision. Changes to the default setting may occur as we get older and our eye muscles become weaker, or even with nerve damage, such as a fourth or a sixth nerve palsy, which can paralyze eye movement and their alignment. For those with muscle problems, the use of exercises or vision training aids have also shown to increase binocular function. Fourias are measured by the optometrist via a cover test or a how Fourier card to measure the extent of misalignment. But in most cases, eyes are straight enough to not cause any problems. That is to say, as a default, the eyes will return to their preferred state of alignment that they're most comfortable with. So to answer the question, does crossing your eyes make them stay that way? The answer would be a no. But you might occasionally ask yourself, what about those times when one eye just subconsciously wanders off? What's going on there? Remember what I said about our eyes having a default alignment? Well, this varies on the individual. Some may have eye sockets that allow for perfectly aligned eyes, whereas some others may have a large deviation. If the deviation is small enough, then our muscles can work off the difference, counteracting the misalignment. But if the deviation is too large and the muscles have reached their maximum capacity, then the brain has to make the unconscious decision to prioritize one good eye while sacrificing the other one. Large misalignments are also known as a tropia or strabismus. At a young age, this may also lead to the formation of a lazy eye. A lazy eye, also known as amblyopia, is a condition where one eye doesn't develop as extensively as the other, leading to reduced vision and poor depth perception. This happens when the brain fails to form essential connections via the optic nerve, and it leads to weaker signals being sent to the brain. If the signals are unusable, then the brain will resort to ignoring them. Another cause of a lazy eye may come in the form of a large difference in refractive errors between the two eyes. If one eye is significantly more near or farsighted, or even have significant astigmatism, then the brain will favor using the good eye and less of the bad one. The best way to fix a lazy eye is to prevent it from happening in the first place. Research has shown that the most effective time to do this is before the age of eight because after that age, it becomes incredibly more difficult to make a difference. Treatments for lazy eyes typically involve the use of spectacles or an eye patch to help strengthen the weaker eye, or even eye drops to temporarily disable the good eye so that the weaker eye can practice perceiving the world. For those that have a mild form of amblyopia or a large phoria, a set of glasses may help tune the eyes to be better compatible with each other 
leading to improved binocular function. While stronger interventions may include the use of prisms or even surgery for functional and cosmetic purposes. When in doubt, the best thing to do is to get it checked out by an optometrist, because in the case of lazy eyes, the earlier the detection, the better the outcome. But that is all for today. A quick video on why crossing eyes shouldn't make them stay that way. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.